Jesuits, which gets into some quite complicated theology about Jesus being of one substance with the Father and all the Trinity language, they say, Jesus of Nazareth couldn't have gotten into that stuff. Jesus was just a simple Jewish boy. He would have been horrified to hear all this stuff said about him. Now, one of the first things to say is we shouldn't imagine that the early fathers who wrote those creeds were ignorant about what they were doing. Indeed, they had a great debate precisely about that phrase of one substance because they knew that it didn't occur in the New Testament and yet they said we in faith use this as a way of clarifying for our people and our language what was said in the New Testament. Now, in fact, when you go back to the New Testament, to the very earliest documents, take the letter to the Galatians, which I think is the earliest Pauline letter, but even if you say it's mid-50s, it's still very early. What we have there in Galatians 4, 1 to 7, for instance, is Paul talking about God's action like a kind of a new exodus, redeeming people from slavery. And what does this action look like? It looks like God sending the Son and God sending the Spirit. And Paul says, unless you're on track with this, you are going back to the elements of the world, to the principalities and powers. In other words, he's saying, if you want to know who the true God is over against the false gods, we're talking about the God who reveals his saving, redeeming action by sending the Son and sending the Spirit. You want a shorthand for that? you either have the Trinity or you have paganism. And what is this Trinity? It is the Jewish monotheism of the Exodus stories seen in the light of Jesus and the Spirit. And in the light of that, I want to say, if the early fathers didn't exist, it would be necessary to invent them. It is as though what we have in the New Testament is like a little rosebud. You know when a, a rose grows on a branch? It's a very tiny little thing about the size of my thumbnail. And if you just looked at that, you'd say, oh, that's just a small, insignificant little thing. There can't be much of a flower in there. Give it a few days and it'll open up and there's more and there's more and there's more inside it. And you'll look at it and you say, who would have thought that all that stuff was inside that rose? But it was there. Now, that's not to say that every development in the creeds, in the church, must have been there at the beginning. But the big ones, Trinity, Atonement, Resurrection, Incarnation, they're there from the beginning, all right. And I've shown in my works that they go back to the mind of Jesus himself. It's not they were invented by Paul. If you want to understand Jesus himself, you have to say, here is somebody who believes that in his own person and presence, the one living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is now present and active and going to die for the sins of Israel and the world. He doesn't express it with all the language of the early fathers or for that matter of Luther and Calvin, but what they are doing is drawing out for their generations the significance of what was there in that tight little rosebud right at the beginning.